service of CNC Worldwide. CNC Podcasts are a service of CNC Worldwide and brought to you by the Greece Chamber of Commerce, providing more than 800 member companies with business solutions since 1984. A judge has refused a defense request that she recuse herself from the case of the man charged with killing a Rochester police officer. Defense attorney James Hinman asked Monroe County Court Judge Victoria Argento to step aside from the case of Thomas Johnson III, the man accused of shooting Officer Darrell Pearson to death earlier this month. Hinman's questioning whether any Rochester area judge or jury can give Johnson a fair trial after all the media and social media coverage and blogging about the Pearson murder. He particularly wants Judge Argento to step aside because she's from Pearson's hometown, East Rochester, and she attended his funeral. Judge Argento declined to recuse herself. Monroe County District Attorney Sandra Dorley says she made the right call. Dorley says local judges will set aside their feelings because they owe it to the court and the defendant. Hinman says he doubts that's possible. The defense may seek to move the entire trial out of the Rochester area. Rochester police have no arrests to report so far as they investigate the stabbing of a teenager in downtown Rochester about 7.30 Thursday morning. Police say a group of teens chased the 13-year-old victim on Franklin Street behind the Sibley building, hit him with a rock, then stabbed him in the torso. He is recovering at Strong Memorial Hospital. The city school district confirms the teen is a city school student, but they say he was not downtown waiting for a bus to school. A Rochester man is charged with second-degree vehicular manslaughter and drunken driving after a woman was killed while crossing Monroe Avenue Wednesday night. Brighton police say the 70-year-old woman was crossing the street near the Towpath Motel where she'd been staying when a car driven by 60-year-old Victor Naraki of Rochester hit her. She died later at Strong Memorial Hospital. Police found Naraki was intoxicated and he is being held in the Monroe County Jail on $50,000 bail. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office confirms the man who accidentally shot and killed his father's friend while hunting this week has a past felony conviction and he shouldn't have been handling a firearm. Corporal John Helfer says Laotian immigrant Fetsovan Kwanavong was convicted of second-degree assault after an incident in Wayne County back in 2006. State and federal law prohibits convicted felons from possessing firearms. Kwanavong took a shot at what he thought was a squirrel while hunting with his father and their friend, 71-year-old Vienchelon Ketavong, in Rush. His shot struck and killed Ketavong. The incident remains under investigation. It may go to a grand jury. The New York Attorney General has reached a settlement with a Pennsylvania company accused of providing inadequate medical care to jail inmates in 13 counties, including Monroe, and overcharging for it. Correctional Medical Care is a for-profit health care contractor. It holds more than $32 million in contracts to care for inmates at county jails. An investigation by Attorney General Eric Schneiderman's office found CMC violated its contract with Monroe and Tioga counties. Schneiderman says CMC understaffed both jails and it shifted work from doctors and dentists to less qualified and lower paid employees. Under the settlement, an independent monitor will oversee CMC's operations at the company's expense and the company will pay restitution and penalties. Monroe County has already gotten back $340,000 in taxpayers' money. United States Senator Charles Schumer says the Federal Agriculture Department has approved a plan to route a new power line around a family farm in Chile rather than through it. RG&E needs a new high-voltage transmission line to improve the reliability of the grid but the original route would have cut the fourth-generation Krenzer family farm in half. Senator Schumer got involved last year. He pushed RG&D and its parent company to reroute the power line. After a couple of false starts, they worked out a deal that everyone buys into. The new line will run along the existing New York Power Authority right-of-way. Your next CNC podcast is when you click on one of our pages and catch one. We post updates as necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News. <laughs>